Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to our Sunday School. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your faithfulness. And those who are uh, coming to church, thank you for uh, your encouragement, uh, giving us both, uh, encouraging us, and uh, moving forward, uh, adjusting to the present condition that we have. And to those who are just listening online, uh, thank you again for your faithfulness. I hope uh, you will find time in order to come to church so that you too can be encouragement to us. I hope uh, you will put this to mind that as church we are to gather together. This online streaming, uh, listening to the service and uh, Sunday school, uh, this is the best alternative you are, if you are mentally or physically incapacitated. But if you are not, uh, then there's no substitute for church, coming to church, assembling with the believers. So thank you for your faithfulness. And please turn your Bibles to 2 John. 2 John, and we are studying today verses, verse 10. But uh, let's start with verse 9 so that we can orient ourselves to the context of this verse 10. So... Second John verse 9, it says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Let us pray. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, once again, we are uh, bringing before you ourselves that if you have anything that, if we have anything that hinders us from listening to you, any uh, occurrences, anything in our hearts that would uh, take away our attention to you and to your word, help us, Lord, to put them aside and concentrate on studying your word. Help us give us understanding, and give us the heart to understand and apply them in our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness to us the past week, even um, today in our service. Guide us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we have studied the, uh, verse 9, and in order for us to understand better what is mentioning here about um, receiving not, we have to review. So, in the, past, uh, uh, in the past lessons, we studied that verse 9, it's about our quest for fidelity. In order to deal with someone, we have to find out if they are faithful to some things. And we mentioned three things regarding fidelity. The first one is fidelity to authority. Fidelity to authority. It means then that we can see that in verse uh, 9, that it says there, uh, He had both the Father and the Son. So, he that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had both the Father and the Son. Now, fidelity to authority means that, number one, we have uh, the same mind as Christ. We have the same uh, thinking. Now, that means then that if we are believers and we are spiritual and faithful to God, then we have the same mind as Christ. That's what he, Apostle Paul mentioned in 1 Corinthians. The mind of Christ is his word. Second, when we say the fidelity to authority, it means that we have the same sentiments. We have the same values. What God values, we value. If we have the doctrine of Christ, it means that we have the same value as God. We value the same things. We have sentiments of the same things, and we love the same way. Thirdly, regarding fidelity to authorities, we are, uh, we are faithful to our covenant with God. Remember, when we, when we were not yet saved, God offered, offered us a new covenant, a new testament, a new agreement. And in that agreement, when we have the doctrine of Christ, we are abiding. 
we are staying in that agreement, which means we are doing our part of the agreement between God and us. You see, salvation is a covenant between God and us. So that's the first part. When you look uh, for someone, when we deal with anyone, first of all, we need to find out if this person is faithful or he has fidelity to God. Secondly, we also saw that we also need to look for someone who has fidelity in the truth. When we studied this, we centered on the Lord Jesus Christ as the truth. Uh, John 14, 6 says, uh, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This means when we are faithful or uh, we have fidelity to the truth, that we see the declaration of Jesus Christ as true. And therefore, we are to be faithful to that declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is the center of the Bible. Old Testament, New Testament, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. So everything written in the Bible is a declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, in knowing this, we have to uh, see that the life of the Lord Jesus Christ is the, the express declaration of God himself. It is an explanation of God himself. The life of Christ explains God. And thirdly, when we say fidelity, we have to be, we, have, we need to be uh, faithful to our responsibility. Faithful to our responsibility. That's the topic that we had last Sunday. And when we say that we are faithful to our responsibility, number one, when we, not, when we are not faithful, there are only three things that uh, comes to mind when we are not faithful to our responsibility. And that is, number one, uh, we don't have the same uh, value that God places in His Word, which means that sometimes when we don't abide in the Scripture, we are speculative of what God says. It means we are taking risks when we don't apply God's Word. It means we, are, uh, we don't think that God's Bible, that God's commandments and His promises are not applicable to us and that we have a better plan for our lives. That's why sometimes we don't abide in our responsibility for God. Second, we think when we are not uh, abiding in the truth or abiding in our responsibility or being faithful to our responsibility is that we need to admit ourselves that when we don't do this, Sometimes it's because we have already backslidden. One sin will break the fellowship between us and God. And this continuous sin will take us away from pursuing God. So a backslidden heart. And thirdly, sometimes, even if we want to, sometimes our hearts is already captivated by sins. If we persist in sinning, instead of giving our lives, our hearts control to God, we are putting them under the control of our sins. So those are the three things that we are to remember. When we read verse 10, when we read verse 10, we can see that this is a test of hospitality, meaning who are we to apply this? When we are receiving somebody, who are we to receive? Now, we look forward to those people who, are, who have fidelity to God, who have fidelity to the truth, and who have fidelity to responsibility. Those are the things that we need to see. That's what we can see now in verse 10. It says, If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine. So, put this in mind when you look at people. When you look at these people who are being referred to here, so you can see here that uh, the Apostle John is telling us that we are to 
it says there, uh, if there come any unto you that bring not this doctrine, receive him not. Now, what we can see here is the test of hospitality. In this verse 10, we can see three things regarding the testing of hospitality. So, verse 10 says, If there come, this is a present indicative, which means this is a continuous process. That if anyone comes, if anyone comes to you and bring not, that word bring means to bear, to stand by, to support this doctrine. So, Apostle John is saying that this is, a, uh, this is an event that we need to watch out for. That if any come and bring not this doctrine, it says here, Receive him not. That's a command. And that's present imperative is do not welcome, do not admit, do not take. If you see this person who don't have fidelity to God, to truth, and to their responsibility, then says it, receive him not. And then continuing, and neither bid him God's speed. So what is he referring to here? So the first thing that we can see here is there is a... Uh, well, verse 10 is one of the verses that's most confusing in the letter of John that's considering 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. This is the one that is most misunderstood. Now, what can we see here? Now, we can see that there is a confusion to whom this verse should be applied. So, but before doing that, it says here that that word there, that if there any come of you, we can see here that there were ministers, there were uh, people who were teaching false doctrines. And this is referring to these people. And if you can see that word, if, it should be translated since. The grammar there, it is that this is not either true or false. But what he's saying here in that word, if, is this is true. And since this is true, you can see here that this event that someone came to the lady and his children to her house, actually existed. It happened. So these people did that only happen. But every time that this, now what is uh, Apostle John is saying that somebody already, uh, somebody already visited uh, the lady. And there will also come in the future possibilities and probabilities that some Paul's teacher would once again go to her house. So, you can see here that this is what he's saying, that you don't receive them. Now, as I've said earlier, this is the verse that is open to abuse and misunderstanding. Now, some Bible commentators think that the prohibition is so strong that we are not to follow them. The prohibition is so unloving and this should be rejected. This is the point of view of some commentators. For example, C.H. Uh, Dodd, that he believes that what the Apostle John is addressing here is an emergency situation. And he said that in his mind, he said, emergency regulations make bad law and that love must find a way and that the elect lady was accustomed to entertain Christian ministers. So he's saying that this was just an emergency case. And then even somebody, he was saying that this is just an emergency case. Therefore, this is a different situation. This is, according to him, 
a prohibition or it is contrary or it is a departure from what an early Christian rule is. That Christian rule is referring to is Hebrews 13.2. Hebrews 13.2, it says there, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So what he's saying here in uh, Hebrews 13.2 is that be not forgetful means do not neglect being hospitable to strangers. And in doing this, sometimes there are instances when we do this, we are entertaining angels. We are being hospitable to angels. So he's saying here, uh, God is saying that this is a violation of this verse. What the Apostle John is saying in verse 10 is contrary to what uh, Hebrews 13 to is saying. But is that really the case? In Hebrews 13 to, the traveler is not a false teacher. So, He's saying that if Apostle John is saying that we are not to receive these travelers, then we are violating this. Now, another, uh, another person that we can see here is another uh, commentator saying this, that Barclay is saying that we are to disobey this uh, command from the Apostle John because this is unloving. What they're saying in effect is that they're more loving than the Apostle John. And if John is inspired by the Holy Spirit in order to write this, then in effect what the commentators Dodd and Barclay are saying is that they are more loving than God, that they are wiser than God. Now, sometimes we think that way too, that some of God's commands or some of God's declaration are not applicable to us, that they do not pertain to us, that sometimes we think that we can do better things than God himself. When we disobey God, we think that we have better plans. And this is what they're saying. But is this true that we are to disregard some parts of the scriptures and do and put our point of view instead? Now, this, what Apostle John is saying here, is not unique. There are some other instances that we are to deal harshly with people who are against the doctrine of Christ. For example, if you will turn with me to Romans 16.7. Romans 16.7. Oh, sorry. So Romans 16.17. It says there, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. You see, this is a harsh statement as well. But if you can see that that word beseech there, Apostle Paul is appealing. He's saying that I am requesting you, brethren, my brothers in Rome, I appeal to you. He said what he's appealing about is mark. That word mark came from the Greek word iskopeo, from where we got our word scope, like telescope, which means when we do this, we continue to watch closely. So what Apostle Paul is saying is, watch closely. Be very careful and cautious. And who will you watch closely? He said, them which cause divisions. That word cause means to bring about, to give a result as. So when we see brethren who are causing division, who are making things and putting divisions in the brethren, that word division, as, uh, it means he is creating discord and there are opposing groups. 
when a person is doing that, creating discord in the church, then you have to watch him. A second thing that you need to look out for is uh, causing offenses. That word offenses came from the Greek word scandalon. Again, we, this is a familiar root word for our word scandal. Again, this word means to cause offense. And that's why this offense arouses opposition with one another. If you see any person, if you see any brethren causing discord and offenses and opposition, and this is because of the contrary doctrine that he is teaching and practicing, it says here, avoid, which means to keep away from, to have nothing to do with them. So in Romans 16, 17, we can see that to those who cause discord, we are to avoid them. Is that loving? If we see it from the point of view of the commentators, we can see that that is not quite loving. And sometimes we feel that way too, that we put our point of view first, we put our emotions first before God. And in Romans 6 17, God is saying, this is the right thing to do when you see brethren who are sowing discord and opposition in the church. Secondly, you can also see that in 2 Thessalonians 3.6, 2 Thessalonians 3.6, it says there, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the traditions, the tradition which he received of us. So we can see here, we are to, again, identify a person who is living disorderly. This time, the Apostle Paul mentioned that this is a command. This is stronger than Romans 16, 17, wherein he was just appealing. He was just requesting. Now, this time, he's commanding the Thessalonians. He says, uh, I command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see there, that word name, in the Bible when you see name, even to us today when we see name, it is the representation of the entire person. What the Apostle Paul is saying here is, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ will do if he is in your place. Now, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw. Again, that word withdraw means to purposely avoid association with someone. We avoid that. And who is this someone? Uh, said, uh, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. Uh, word, that word disorderly came from the Greek word ataktos, which means, it is a military term, which means a soldier who is not keeping rank. You expect a soldier to be disciplined, and yet this soldier is not doing what he's supposed to do. That's the word here, disorderly, which means this person uh, is slack. Now, in this case, in First Thessalonians, these are people who refuse to work. So, what he's saying here, the Apostle Paul is saying here, is that if you see anyone, any Christian who is living a disorderly life, particularly if he doesn't want to work, therefore you can see here that believers are to work. Christians are supposed to earn their living. And if they're not doing that, then they are living a disorderly life. And what is the Apostle Paul's command? He said, you withdraw from these people. Don't have anything to do with him. Avoid associating with someone who doesn't want to work. Well, during their time in, in Second Thessalonians, during their time, there were believers who uh, didn't want to work. So what they do is just go to the houses of other believers and become busybodies and try to uh, try to satisfy their need, their need for food and everything to other believers. 
And Apostle Paul is saying, do not entertain these believers. We will withdraw from them. So those who refuse to work, Apostle Paul said, avoid them. Withdraw from them. Titus 3.10. Titus 3.10, it says there, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. Is this loving? You can see that this is loving. You might be, we, we, we are prone to think that we can do, we can win these people instead of rejecting them. Now, by the way, this word heretic here means uh, a person who is schismatic, a person who uh, is factious. Schismatic means someone who causes division. And then, this person is a follower of a false doctrine. That's why he's causing division. The people, the believers uh, that the Apostle Paul is referring to, they have already been taught. And a heretic is someone who is teaching another thing which is contrary to what was taught to these believers and causing division. He's saying that this kind of person, you identify them. And when you identify them, it says there, after the first and second admonition, that word admonition means to provide instruction so that they will change their way of thinking so that they will correct their beliefs and their behavior. You do this two times. The third time, if they don't listen, you reject them. That word reject means to avoid association with them. Is this very loving? To our mind, sometimes this is not loving, but this is what we're supposed to do according to Apostle Paul in Titus 3.10. In fact, he commanded this to a pastor, Titus. He's telling them, he's telling him that if you see any among your people who are heretic, someone who is causing division, someone who is causing factions in the church, that some, one side is against another, you need to admonish him first and second time. But if he doesn't listen, if, that's, if he doesn't change his beliefs, if he doesn't change his behavior, then you reject. So those who have wrong belief or practice, we are to reject. Galatians 1.8, another verse. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. You know that word accursed is from the Greek word anathema. Remember, uh, in the time of, uh, I believe it's uh, the Pentateuch, the time of uh, when they were about to attack Jericho, God commanded them that do not take anything from Jericho. Kill all people in Jericho. Destroy them. Do not take any, any material things because they are to be annihilated. That is the word, the picture of the word anathema here, which means this is a gift given by a vow or in fulfillment that is in fulfillment of God's command and devoted to God and destroyed for God's sake. Anathema is someone who is destroyed for God's sake. So Apostle Paul is saying, those who are teaching wrong doctrine, another doctrine, they are cursed, destroyed for God's sake. So you can see here, those who preach different gospel, they are cursed. And lastly, 2 Thessalonians 3.14. 2 Thessalonians 3.14, it says, and if any man obey not our word by this episode, know that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. So is that very kind and loving when you embarrass someone? 
Apostle Paul is saying here to the Thessalonians, says, if any man obey not, that word obey came from the Greek word hupa uh, Two Greek words there, two root words. Hupa means under, huper is under, and kuo means to hear. Therefore, this person is not obeying because he is not paying attention. If you see someone who's not paying attention and he's not paying attention and he's not obeying because he's not paying attention, he's saying that note that man. And this is true, even in our midst today, that we see people who are claiming believers and yet they, in that, they don't sit under the teaching of the Word of God. And since they don't sit under the teaching of the Word of God, they do their own thing and they don't obey. And Apostle Paul is saying, note that man. That word note means to pay special attention so that you can remember this person and in the future recall and respond properly. So when you see someone who doesn't want to listen to God's word, you make, take special attention, special note. And then when the time comes that he, you have to deal with him, then you have a basis on how to deal with him. And he, he says here, uh, Said, know that man and have no company. Do not mingle with this kind of person. If you are a believer, do not mingle with this person. You can see that this might be harsh. Among the believers, you not, don't mingle with this kind of person who's not obeying the word of God. It's not paying attention to the teaching and preaching of God's word. Do not mingle with them. Why? Because they're, they're, they're dangerous. And when you do that, what is the purpose? that he may be ashamed. He's saying, so he will be dishonored. When you don't fellowship with him, maybe he will come to realize that he's being embarrassed. Then maybe he will come to realize that this is the thing that I need to do. I need to listen to God's word so that my life will be changed and I will obey God's word. So those are the verses that we can see that this these verses are some kind of harsh. And first, at the first instance that we see these verses, we might think that this, these verses are unloving and therefore not to be obeyed, which is the, sca the case that what the commentators were saying in verse 10, that this is too harsh and loving. And they're saying that love must find a way. And the loving way to do this is to follow the scriptures to follow the teachings of the Word of God. Well, you can see here that the Apostle uh, John is just doing what God commanded them. Them, meaning Apostle John is not alone in this area. Apostle John is not alone. He can see that this is also the stand the teaching from the Apostle Paul. So what can we get here? That sometimes we think that we, are, we have a better way than God. That sometimes we are more loving than God. But we should always remember, we can never love more than God. We cannot love like God. We cannot love more than God if we stay away from the teachings of the Word of God. The only way that we can love and love best is if we follow the Scriptures. And if we want the best life for us, the best means of communicating His love and even our own love is to follow the Scriptures. We are not better than God. Our point of view is not better than God. God's way is always the best. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is why we are not to give an inch to our point of view against God's point of view. If we, God says this, we are to obey this. We are not to find excuse in order not to obey God. Because God's word is living. It is alive that God foresaw from the 
eternity past when he gave his word that this is applicable to every believer. Then he commands something. He took into consideration everything that we are, everything that we are in, and everything that our fellow believers have. So in all of this, we can see that we are to follow the scriptures. Remember the previous verse? Those who abide in the doctrine of Christ. Those who abide. We are responsible. We must be faithful to God's word. We must be faithful to our responsibility. And we must be faithful to our God. With that, we end Sunday school. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your faithfulness. And help us to understand. Help us to put in our minds that your word and its application is the best thing that we can ever do. Help us to, give, to uh, have the desire to apply your word. Maybe sometimes we don't agree with your word, but give us understanding on how to live them in our everyday lives. Bless us this week. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.